Welcome to admins.com in our lab video series on Cisco ASA CX. You can find a complete list of ASA CX video on our website by clicking the link above and sign up for our newsletters to receive the latest video updates. In the first video of our Cisco ASA CX video series, we're going to show you how to install the CX service on the Cisco ASA. Here we are going to assume that you have a blank solid state drive or SSD that need to be installed from scratch, whether because you already have the ASA and then you bought the SSD later as a spare part, or the SSD came in as part of the RMA. But if you happen to buy the SSD together with the ASA, the chances are the CX software is already installed, and then all you need to do is to go through the configuration setup, in which case you can pretty much skip this video entirely. Now for our lab setup, this is going to be pretty much what we will be using in this lab video series. You can see there's quite a bit of a server components in here, which we'll go through later when we actually deal with them in the future videos. But as far as this lab video is concerned, we will be installing the CX software module on our ASA. So we're going to be focusing on what's within the screen circle right here. So here we have our ASA firewall, firewall one, with the outside interface on VLAN 11, with the IP of 192.168.10.252. And then the inside interface is on VLAN 10, with the IP of 172.16.10.252. And since what we have here is the ASA 5515X, the CX module is actually sharing the same management interface as the ASA. And this is actually true for an ASA that's part of the 5500X product family. And since that we are not using the management interface on the ASA itself, we can pretty much assign the IP to the CX that is the same subnet as the Insight interface of the ASA. So here we use the IP of .250 for that, and again it's on VLAN 10 the same as the inside interface of the ASA. But if you happen to deal with the bigger 5585X model, the CX in that case is comes, actually comes in the hardware module. There's actually a physical module that needs to be installed on the, in the second slot of the 5585X chassis, just like the IPS module. In that case, the module will have its own dedicated management interface that you can use, and you can actually have to physically cable up that port to the switch as well. So for our prerequisites for this lab, you need to download the CX boot image from the cisco.com as well as the actual CX software image itself. So there will be actually two files that you need to download, the boot image and the software image. And at this point, I assume that you already have obtained or owned the SSD. As the SSD is pretty much the mandatory component to get the CX to work on the ASA. And if you happen to run any other software services on the ASA like the IPS, service to make sure that you disable those before you begin the installation as those are not really compatible to one another. You can actually only have one software service running at the time. And this is a soft ASA version 9.2. And then you need to make sure that any features that's not really compatible with the CX on the ASA or any other equivalent services like the BUSA or scan saves are disabled or removed to make sure that you will not be running into any kind of compatibility issues later on. So to start on our CS installation, what we're going to do is to jump into our ASA firewall, and here we have a SSS session to our firewall one. First, we're going to do a command show inventory just to make sure that we, in fact, have the SSD drive installed on our ASA. Next, we're going to check our interface with the show interface IP briefed. And as I mentioned earlier, that with the model of ASA we're dealing with, the CX management interface is actually sharing the same physical management interface as the ASA. So we want to make sure that management 00 is up and up. And the next thing you need to do is to upload the CX boot image to the flash of the ASA. But at this point, we are very done that. So what we're going to do is to do a show disk 0 and then look for the CX. So right here, we have our boot image for the CX version 9.3.1 that we're going to be using in this video. And at this point, you should have also uploaded the CX software image to your FTP server as well. So in our lab setup, we're going to be using our Windows 2008 right here. That is our domain controller, but it's also acting as our FTP server. So it's on VLAN 32, 16, 32.40. So let me bring the RDP session up. So right here, and we have a folder called CX that we have already uploaded the CX image to. Again, same CX version 931. And we're going to be using the FileZilla server, FTP. 
make sure that we have our user right here created Cisco with the directory tied to the folder CX. So that should be ready to go. So next we're going to boot our CX module into a recovery mode using our boot image and command for that. Again, we're back on the firewall one is the software module module. You can see there are actually three different options that you can choose here. But since we're dealing with CX, we choose CX SC recover. You can see right here to configure recovery of this module. And we need to specify the image that we want to use. So the command is configure image. And we know that's located on disk zero. And the name of that image is right here. So I'm just going to copy and paste. Make sure that's the end of the command and then enter. And then to tell the CX or ASA to boot the CX using that image, you use the same software module command module CX recover and then boot. Okay, so enter. And then there's a warning message telling you that you're about to erase all the configuration on the module. And then you need to hit confirm for that. So enter. You can see that it says recover issue for the module CXSC. So if you do a show module command, you can see now it starts to shut down the module itself. And if you give it a couple seconds here, you can see now the status for the CX module has changed into the recover. So that's going to take a couple minutes. So what I'm going to do is pause the video and I'll return when that completes. All right, so it's been about five minutes, and at this point, LCX should came back and in the recovery mode. So next we're going to um, console into the CX module and you can session into the CX console from the ASA, but you need to either be in the direct console to the ASA itself or the SSS session, which is what we're using right here. And definitely try to avoid using a terminal server. Uh, so I'll show you right here what happened. So here we have a terminal server connect out ASA firewall. And if you're trying to issue a session, into the CX using the session CXSC console. You can see that everything is working okay until you need to exit out of that using this escape sequence right here. And when you do that, which is control shift six X, you'll find, let's see, let me do it properly. Sometimes it doesn't really work. And when it works, you actually exit out the whole ASA back to the terminal server instead of exiting the CX. So somehow the escape sequence of the terminal server kind of interferes with the, or it's actually used the same escape sequence as the CX is trying to avoid terminal server doing that. So going back to our SSS session to our firewall one. And now if you do a session command to the CX console, and I believe it just basically kicked out the console session that we initiated earlier on the other tab right here. So now if you're trying to go ahead and log in with the admin and the default password for the CX is admin123 with the uppercase A for admin. So admin123. And now we are in the console of the CX. You can see right here, we have the boot as part of the prompt. And that tells us that we are currently in the recovery mode. So the Next thing we need to do is to issue a partition command to initiate the CX to start creating partitions for our software. So now we're asking to confirm whether you want to proceed. So let's do yes. And obviously there's a warning telling you that you are about to erase all the configuration on the CX. So go ahead and set yes. And this is probably going to take one to two minutes. So we're just going to Wait right here until it completes. All right, so at this point, the partitioning is done and all of the configuration should have been erased. So that means we have no configuration right now. So what we're gonna do next is to issue the setup command. So we're gonna step through the setup wizard here to configure the basic parameters for our CX. So first is our host name for the CX. We're gonna call this one CX1. Uh, all in uppercase. 
Now, do we want to configure IPv4 address for the interface? We said yes. Do you want to enable DSCP? We we'll said no, which is default. For the IP address, we said it's going to be on the same subnet as the inside interface of the ASA, so it will be 172.16.250. So 172.16.10.250. Subnet mass is slash 24. The default gateway is our core switch right here, which is the dot one. So 172.16.10.1. Now, do we want to configure IPv6? We we'll said no. It's just going to go ahead and use stateless auto configuration for IPv6. Next is the IP for the DNS, which is our 172.16.32.40, which is our domain controller. Right here, enter. Secondary DNS, we do not have that. Next is the local domain name. And for us, we'll set yes first. It will be labminutes.com. Next is our search domain. We'll set yes. We want to configure that. And same thing, it will be labminutes.com. For NTP, yes, we want to use NTP since we always want to keep our time synchronized. For the NTP server, we do have our core switch running as the NTP server right now, so we're going to use 172.16.10.1, which is the same as our default gateway. And we do not want to enable NTP authentication, so say no to that. Make sure you review the, the config. Everything looks good. Then we enter to apply the changes. Okay, so you can see the configuration saved successfully. And it's restarting network services, IP, uh, NTP service. Press enter to continue. Okay. Before we go ahead and initiate the software install, we want to do a quick connectivity check to our FTP server, and that is our domain control, the IP at 172.16.32.40, and make sure that is pingable. So all is good. Make sure that I have this FTP interface or for the FileZilla server open so we can see the activity. Next, we're going to do the software install with the command system install. You can see if you do a question mark, you don't really see anything until you hit enter. In this case, it's supposed to be followed by the path to the file. So that will be our FTP. We have a user for authentication, Cisco, Cisco, at the IP of 172.16.32.40. And the image, let me grab the name of the image right here, copy and paste, enter. And you can see that there is an FTP activity right here. It's downloading the image. And that should be done in a couple minutes. So I'm gonna go ahead and pause the video one more time and then come back when it's finished. All right, so we are back and let's go through where we left off when we're trying to download the image to the CX right here. Then after downloading, it went extracting, and then it asks you if you want to go ahead with the upgrade. So right here, you would type in uh, enter to proceed, and then you have to wait a couple more minutes, and they will ask you to reboot the system. This is where you press enter to reboot, and a couple more minutes later, this is where we are. So at this point, you have to do a show module. If you remember before we had the status show up as recovered, right now the status has changed to up. That means our CX module is up and running. So we can go ahead and session back into the CX with session CX console. And right here, we are presented with the login prompt and you can see now the name has changed to CX1, which is the name that we gave during the setup. So, Go ahead and lock in with the admin and then again default is for the password is admin with capital A, uh, admin123 with capital A. So now that LCX is up and running, what we're going to do now is to do a couple post install configuration. The first thing is to change the time zone. So if you do show time, so right now you can see that by default is UTC time zone. So we're going to go ahead and change it using the config time zone command and you'll be presented with several menu options. You're just going to have to pick the region that corresponds to where you are. So for us is, let me see, 17 for US, so 17. 
and then we're in Pacific time zone. So we'll type 11. And it's going to ask if you want to restart the process manager. Say yes for the time zone to detect effect. Give it a couple seconds here. And if you now do a show time one more time, you see that our time zone has changed to the PDT. The last thing we're going to do is to change our passwords. We, let's say we no longer want to use the default admin123 password. The command is config pass wd. So enter the new password and then confirm the password and make sure that your password is the length is between 8 to 127, although I don't think anybody would do that many characters. And then it's a combination of uppercase, lowercase, and digits. Okay, so it looks like we have successfully changed the password. Now to verify that we have the web access to the CX, I'm going to go back to our remote desktop session here on the domain controller, open up a web browser. I'm going to try to web into the CX. And here I have a bookmark created already for uh, 1621610.250. Click into that, you can see we get our certificate warning. Since we're using Firefox, we have to accept the certificate. And here we are at the Cisco Prime Security Manager 931 web interface login. Go ahead and log in using the admin with the password that you just changed to. And then click login, make sure you have the a successful login, which we do. And that's pretty much confirmed that uh, CX is up and running and ready to be configured. All right, so that should wrap up our video on ASA CX service installation. You can visit our website to view an extensive list of our lab videos and sign up to get access to additional lab contents. Thank you for watching labmiss.com, and I'll see you guys in the next video.